Hey, Rob. Rob, come over here. Oh, okay, okay. I want sure. you to read this, uh, got this right, article. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, it was by who now? Okay, I think it's the guy who used to call himself Frederick Clarkson. Okay. You know, I remember he used to write for Salon.com. Okay. Well, okay. This is on the Patheos blog. Salon.com got sold last week. Oh, oh really? They haven't been doing well. Okay. But like 15 years ago, he did articles about me and Neil Horsley oh, when okay. we were doing abortion did, camp. Did, did, did he and do that? Did he come and visit you guys? No, that would be Daniel Vole. That's okay. Daniel Vole from okay. Esquire magazine and, and okay. l later with HBO okay. America Undercover series. But that, but no, I, I don't, I think Frederick Clarkson is someone I've met and I think it's a pseudonym. Okay. I don't know if it's someone, a spy within the pro-life movement or, but I'm pretty sure it's a pseudonym, but in it this, could, it could be one of our people who's framing it the other way so he can say it. I have, that's true. You know, it's possible. I, well, it's awesome. well, I've got an alert set up on my Yahoo email, and I get anytime anything to do with Paul Hill and abortion, uh, I get an article okay. uh, emailed to me every time it, it comes up in any of the news. Alrighty. And so it came up after Alabama passed their uh, anti-abortion bill. Interesting. Okay. And what it oh, is, yeah, and it's yeah. not Frederick Clarkson, it's Fred Clark. Yeah, yeah. But it's, a, it's obviously the same guy. There's okay. no one else who writes this way and has this perspective, so he's using his... Old pseudonym from Salon.com. I'm sure of it. I bet money. Okay. Um, but anyway, my old friend Frederick Clarkson. Uh, well, if it's 18 years later, maybe it's his kid. Yeah, maybe it's his kid. <laughs> it's the same guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I. But anyway, aka Fred Clark. Um, can I read it for you? Of course. All right. Let me get up to it here. Huh? I'm down at the bottom. Head. I get into this stuff. You know. Okay, it's from Patheos. The, the title is. Alabama just unloosed an army of Raskolnikovs. This will not end well. Okay. Full stop. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I hate and you know man. Raskolnikov, right? From, no, Do from no. Do this Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Oh, okay. The main character, who who, who is a a, a a student who's in poverty, whose mother, whose father's dead, and whose mother's struggling at home, and whose sister's on the verge. He's going to school. Is Crime and Punishment the most yeah. famous novel by Fyodor Dostoevsky? Okay. Um, it's He's a, the guy that goes criminal. Yeah, well, well, no, he doesn't. Okay, here's what he does: his his sister's about to marry some some you know gorilla just out of desper financial desperation that okay. she doesn't love, some old man, you know, and. And so he's in this terrible position. He's at, he's going to school in St. Petersburg, okay. and he doesn't have money, and he's been heavily indoctrinated with Marxism. Yeah. Okay. And so he's atheistic. And he sees that that there are people who are just useless eaters, and he's got even though he still has the the emotional and and natural human, you know, um, antipathy to you know a conscience. He still has a conscience, and he doesn't want to kill other people. So in the end, he winds up murdering his landlady, and uh, because he's he's thought it all through, and his his logic is really consistent mm -hmm. as to why he does it. If you have his uh, presuppositions, yeah, then it, then it follows. What he does, Clearly, yeah. that, that, that she is useless, she's not useful to anyone, oh, the landlady. And, and it would be better, yeah, the landlady, and she has some money, and it would be better for him to have the money, and help his sister, and help his mom, and you really can make an airtight case that it's From all, that supposition, yeah. From those suppositions, yeah, right. it's all, all logical. And that's the point of right. why he's saying Alabama just unloosed an <laughs> army of Raskolnikov. Okay, that's funny. Okay. Even though, yeah, anyway, he says this will not end well. He uses a Marxist example. Right. That's interesting. May, right? right. May, exactly. <laughs> May 15th, 2019, by Fred Clark. Our old Fred buddy Clark. Frederick Clarkson has, okay. has shaved down the names. <laughs> okay, his first words Frederick are... Frederick Clarkson sounds too Jewish. Or yeah, I don't know. I don't know. His first... <laughs> <too waspy. laughs> his, 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 his first words are... <clears throat> Paul Jennings Hill. That's his wife showed up in my inbox. <laughs> Paul Jennings Hill was a real-life Raskolnikov. Like the protagonist of Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, Hill was consumed by both pride and doubt. He longed to believe that he was exceptional and that he was morally superior and therefore entitled to something better, grander, and larger than the humdrum lives of others. And so he was drawn to a theoretical system that assured him it was so. Wait a minute. How does he know all this? Right, he's, he's psychoanalyzing Paul Hill. Well, well no, yeah, yeah, wait, so, so did Paul Hill take him aside and tell him all this? Look, like, here's what's right, 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 right. Did he do that? Did he do that with Neil Horsley? Right, no, no. No, no. <laughs> no he's just been, Paul Hill's been dead long enough, he figures he's got the right to, to just, yeah. just make, make it, it all make it up. up. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. But, um, 
Because you can't get any of that from Paul Hill's writing. No. Or his public uh, statement. Can you get that? Is he going to come up next to his kids and his wife and get that out of them? No. 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 And he doesn't, he doesn't re- reference any of that. Okay. Anyway, no. he's just taking liberties uh, to just to just to make these assertions. So, okay. Okay, but theory wasn't enough, not for Raskolnikov or for Hill. They had to prove their theoretical exceptionalism through their actions, and both sought to do so by means of a lethal experiment. If I really, truly believe this theory, they both agonized, then I can and must act on it, proving the truth of it and proving the reality of my ardent conviction by committing the murders that this theory both demands and justifies. And so... Uh, Rodion Raskolnikov butchered an old woman and her daughter with an axe. By the way, in the story, he didn't want to kill her daughter. She just got, yeah, it was in the wrong place, place at the wrong time, and, so, and one thing led to another. And so, yeah, uh, uh, moral relativity, blah, blah. Right. Second one, and yeah. so Paul, Hill, Paul Jennings Hill murdered a doctor, an abortion doctor, and a security guard in cold blood. And now he's got a picture of Eric Rudolph. A mercenary. A picture of Eric Rudolph, Scott Roeder, okay. and Paul Hill. Eric Rudolph, Scott Roeder, and Paul. Yes, there they are. There they are. Mm-hmm. He's okay. forgotten a bunch of them, but okay. He's forgotten a bunch of people, yeah. In Hill's case, the abstract theory he relied on for his own sense of moral superiority and exceptionalism <laughs> <laughs> was the abortion equals the Holocaust times 11D1 garbage that has long simmered. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That the garbage that has long simmered on the fringes and often bubbled up to the mainstream surface. Where, Where does he point to the fact that they are garbage. Where does he prove that? That this whole thing is He doesn't even try. He doesn't even try. try. That's his presupposition. Just like his his psychoanalysis. Being being denounced before the committee. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, His his psychoanalysis of of Paul Hill's inward thoughts that that he just that he just throw Okay. So uh the, this garbage that it, Holocaust, the abortion equals the Holocaust times 111 garbage that is long simmered on the fringes and often bubbled up to the mainstream surface of the anti abortion movement. It's tempting, now check this out, Rob. It's tempting, this is Fred Clark, it's tempting to say that Paul Hill took this argument seriously, choosing to believe as though what he and his co belligerents in the culture wars were saying was actually true. But again, like Raskolnikov, he chose to kill. Not because he was certain his theory was true, but because he was tormented by the ever-present doubt that it wasn't. And so he decided, <laughs> and he, so he decided that there was only one way to be sure. Again, he's, he's psychoanalyzing and imputing to Paul Hill. Well, to look into the heart and mind of another is to risk inaccuracy. So yeah, that's true, that's true. But, but let's just follow this. Now, here comes the core of, of his article, according to the way they've, they've tabbed it over mm-hmm. here. Paul Hill argued that abortion was the moral equivalent of the Nazi Holocaust. Just like the National Right to Life Committee, the Southern Baptist Convention, the Christian Coalition, Focus on the Family, and dozens of other evangelical groups said it was. If that's true, Hill said, then he wasn't merely justified, but obligated to take up arms against abortionists. If you're confronted with an evil equal in magnitude to that of Adolf Hitler, as all these groups insisted was the case, then surely one is obliged to do more mm-hmm. than vote Republican every four years in the hopes of one day appointing enough judges to change the law of the land. Confronted with what all of these groups assured him was the Holocaust, he did, decided to become Klaus von Stauffenberg. Okay. Okay. Which, which guy was that? Now? Remind me. I you know I well, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. He's some some guy who 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 did force resistance against the Nazis. I, I yeah I think I think it's the guy from Schindler's List, isn't it? I'm not sure. Well, he didn't oh, no. or is Klaus von Stauffenberg the assassin? No, he's the assassin who tried to hit to hit uh, Hitler. Hitler. Well, he was the guy that actually left the the uh, briefcase there. Or was it another episode? Maybe so, but we'll have to look it up. Yeah, we'll have yeah, to look okay, it up. Okay. But clearly, yeah. it's somebody who physically attacked the Nazi regime. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, Um, alas for Hill, his experiment did not go as he hoped. His fellow anti-abortion culture warriors recoiled in horror and rushed to condemn his actions as wholly unwarranted, evil, sinful, and impossible to justify. Uh, What if they were just chicken shit? (laughs) What, 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 what you, you know, why didn't he explore chicken shit doctrine at all? Okay. You mean Paul Hill or Frederick? Uh, yeah. no, Frederick. Why didn't Frederick explore chicken shit doctrine in in um, in, in the uh, 
abortion opposition industry. Right, you know, right, right. Yeah, that's all. Uh, I had one guy who was very, very uh, educated and uh, honored in abortion opposition. Yeah. The man's big news, and he will, I will keep his name out of it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he knows who he is. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he was willing to admit, I confronted him with some stuff one time. I said, hey, uh, you know, abortion really looks an awful lot like what our most esteemed military philosophers say is war. Uh -huh. And I go down the list, right? Yeah. And he's got a military background. Right. So he's real quiet for a long time, and he's staring at me. And he says, you know, one thing about a truck driver. Uh-huh. They have a lot of time to think. Said, <laughs> no, no, no. And then and he says, well, let me think about this overnight. I'll get back. Up. So he's giving this talk. Yeah. And in the course of that, he says, you know, if there's something you know you should do and you don't do it, the word for that is cowardice. Wow. So he never, and, and he was the guy that, he, uh, he said other things, made it quite clear. He didn't want to go there. Yeah. And, and uh, he was quite clear about that. Okay. Yeah. And but he said some very biting. Well, that's material. also now this now Flip Benham is nowhere on. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Flip Benham is nowhere near uh, the the intellect that that man is. No, no, no we're near. Flip all the guys Benham went on television with Paul Hill and told him to for him who knows what is right to do and does not do it to him is it is a sin. Yeah. That's what he said to Paul Hill. Yeah. And yeah. then when Paul Hill did it, Flip uh, condemned him and offered to pull. Uh, the switch uh, to, execu to execute. To execute. Yeah, that's because Paul, yeah, Paul was uh, originally sentenced to uh, electrocution. Yeah, and then and then they changed it to the injection. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, that's what they did. Yeah. yeah. So, uh -huh. but I, you know, so the thing the thing there is he is not exploring at all the mass cowardice of the abortion opposition. Right. Right. But he's actually he's actually. Uh, Going to touch on that. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, okay. Even though, even though he's a son of a gun, <laughs> uh, Fred Clarkson, Frederick Clarkson, or Fred Clark, or whoever he really is, yeah. um, actually is closer to the core of this thing. So far, he has been. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so he says they backtracked away from him so ferociously. That's the mainstream pro-life movement. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I got four fingers pointing at me. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that you can still see the skid marks 25 years later. Yeah, and they're shorts. Jennings, that's, that's <laughs> right. And they're shorts. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so, 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 Paul Jennings Hill was executed by the state of Florida in 2003. I know, I was there. Yeah. Um, I was too, but I was circulating in the vehicle. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you, was, you were I went the whole state. You that's the only around. place I didn't go because I, I knew it was covered. You know, I forgot. He died disgraced, disavowed, and disowned by the vast majority of the movement whose own words had inspired his actions. Oh, <laughs> no, not that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but while that movement has long condemned Paul Hill, Yo. it has steadfastly clung to the rhetoric and the moral logic that inspired his fatal experiment. Now here, here, Rob, is where Frederick Clarkson has put has got his finger on uh, has got the number of the pro life movement. Our yeah. own words will condemn us. Uh huh. Mm. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, here is, and it's why I have a grudging respect for whoever he yeah, really is, well, Frederick well, Clarkson. Well, because okay. he's been closer to the truth of this, the moral truth of this reality. Yeah. And, and here's how you see it. Okay. Um, I mean, here's how it plays out. Um, here is a section of the anti-abortion bill passed yesterday by the uh, Alabama State Senate. And they go on, you know, for, for, okay, they're going, it's six million Jewish people died in the Holocaust. This is the actual bill in yeah. Alabama. They're going, Joseph Stalin's regime... Uh, three million, I think it was a lot more than that in the gulags, but anyway, they're going three million, 2.5 million by the Chinese, uh, 1.5. Yeah. 1.5 million by the Chinese. Yeah. These are ridiculous. Yeah, these are ridiculous. No, he's a liar. So, See, that's yeah. pretty foundational lie. Yeah. yeah. It's but that's not Frederick Clarkson. That's him quoting the, um, he's quoting the Alabama bill. Oh, the those bill. guys were lying their teeth yeah, off. The Alabama they bill is, is actually... Two and a half million. These numbers they did are, that standing on their head. Right. Oh, these, yeah, right. these numbers are not from Fred Clark. No, no, they're no. from the Alabama bill. That's bullshit. Yeah, right. yeah. So, okay, uh, and then the Chinese, 1.5 to 3 million in, in, oh, uh, in Cambodia. In Cambodia. Oh, okay. Well, and, that's... And maybe about, a approximately a million in Rwanda. No. Like no. Four, Was just, that Marxist? No. I don't think so. Uh, we'd all be that yeah. I think it's tribal, so, but we're not. 
So there's still the bill. All of these are widely acknowledged to have been crimes against humanity. Yeah. By comparison, here's the bill again in Alabama. More than 50 million babies have been aborted in the United States since the Roe decision in 1973. More than three times the number who were killed in German death camps, Chinese purges, Stalin's wow. gulags, Cambodian killings, and Rwanda combined. And they're full of crap. More than the inside of an Alabama cow. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more and than that. And they they're all pro-war, too. Yeah. So it's just... Yeah. There's so much slaughter. Yeah. There's so much slaughter that that all humanity is imperiled by this worldwide genocide right. of right. the most innocent and, and defenseless people group on the planet. Right. For any reason or none at all, yeah. for all nine months. Well, it's a good thing I'm not ornery or opinionated, or That's I get on my soapbox and you'd hear an <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing. Uh, so now we're back to Clarkson. The bill. No, we're not no. the bill. We're, Clarkson says, the kindest, speaking about the, that... Um, part of the Alabama okay. bill, the kindest and most generous and most charitable interpretation of this passage is to say it is disingenuous bullshit, which is what you just said. <laughs> that was very kind of you, Rob. Uh, uh, if it were not that... Thank you, my son. Yes. <laughs> if any of these people... If any of these people genuinely believed any of this, even slightly, then they would have to be moral monsters. <laughs> well, that's all true. That's where you go with cowardice. I think we are moral. Oh monsters. heck yes! Yeah. Oh, give me a. We word, are yeah. moral monsters. Oh, I'm, I'm telling of... you right now, and I'm telling you, apart from the blood of Jesus, I absolutely deserve hell. Uh -huh. yeah. You do. I have you failed do. to defend the preborn. Yeah. This is exactly what Frederick Clarkson, Fred Clark, what you're saying it is. Uh, to a certain degree, you've nailed it. You've put your finger on it. My the, statement about all this is. Hey, I resemble that remark. No, that's... <laughs> but he continues. Okay. <clears throat> Consider uh, what these white, Jesus-worshipping Alabama Republican men are claiming here. Who saved mostly black babies. Yeah, okay. if it gets enforced. Yeah, if yeah. it gets enforced. Yeah. yeah. The law would save mostly black babies, but it was voted for by white men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All of those. Cold because, and they got... They, yeah, they got, they got black men in the Alabama... Uh, Reps, you know, they got sure. them. They're there. Sure they did. But, but they have no uh, qualms with just collaborating with their own gen genocide. Too bad. No. Very sad. No. Very sick. Um, well, you know what? It, We're darn near catching up. But it's not a thing of black skin. I'll tell you why. I, I just came from Africa 48 yeah. hours, less than 48 hours ago. No, no. I was in Africa, and we marched, and the, and the <laughs> best resistance to legalized sodomy and legalized abortion is coming from... Africa, uh, particularly East Africa, uh, the Nigerian police just uh, uh, rounded up and arrested a bunch of Marie Stopes clinic workers two days ago. Um, so it's not the black skin; it's something sick in the psychology of Black American yeah, culture. Yeah, it's called uh, the uh, Great Society. Yeah, the slave mentality of the Great Society. Yeah, so it's not the black Thank skin. Thank you, Lyndon Baines yeah. Johnson. Yeah. the guy who said, "I have them niggers voting Democrat." For years. Right, uh, right. How are you? How how enlightened? You know. Yeah, so it's not the African heritage. It's not genetics necessarily. It's not the black skin. That's for sure. Because the blacks in Africa are resisting it more effectively than any white. Way anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, they're putting us to yeah. shame. Oh, they're mopping the floor with our mop. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But it's it's, it's the slave mentality. It's yep. the slave yep. mentality. Yep. Yeah. We got it more than we think, buddy. Yeah. Oh no, we're. I mean, it's. I oh, think yeah. that's. I think we're off on a rabbit trail. Mm -hmm. But I think the the biggest source of of the of the friction between uh, white Americans and Black Americans is we're just too much alike. Yeah, that's all. Oh, absolutely, we're just too much alike, and that's it's so nigger. fucking annoying. Yeah, go out my street, this yeah. humble inner city neighborhood yeah. in Williston, Flippin, North Dakota. What do you see? See real humble houses. With real fancy four by four crew cab pickups in front of every one of them. Yeah, they remind me of Cadillacs and black neighborhoods, man. <laughs> That's it's so similar. I just walk up and down the street and laugh my butt off. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Good point. <laughs> so, okay, they are saying these white Alabama Republicans, right? Hey, legal abortion is a worse crime against humanity than the Holocaust, Stalinist, Maoist, Purges. Mary Rouge killing fields and Rwanda genocide all put together. And B, that the most appropriate, wholly adequate, and heroic response to this crime <laughs> against humanity was to vote for and donate to the campaigns of Alabama Republicans. Hey, we resemble that remark. No, yeah. oh, that's right. <laughs> World War II, in this view, was morally illegitimate yep. and indefensible. Good Germans 
and the citizens of Nazi-occupied countries throughout Europe should simply have bided their time for decades supporting the opposition parties with their votes, and especially their financial donations, in the hope that after a generation or so of ongoing genocide, they would amass enough political power to pass laws ending the killing. No. Bonhoeffer and von Stauffenberg and Cory ten Boom and Albert Camus and Eisenhower and Churchill and Roosevelt were all wrong to pursue other means of stopping the lesser, not as serious as abortion crime of the little Holocaust. Mm -hmm. What Paul Kagame and Paul Rusesabigina <laughs> and Zura Karuhimbi should have done in response to the Rwandan genocide, which was, after all, only 2% as serious as abortion, was to support their local Republican Party, just as Dith Pran should have done in Cambodia. Okay. These anti-abortion fundraisers and politicians who have made a career out of such rhetoric say they Including medical programs. Uh-huh. <laughs> Insurance. <laughs> they say yeah. they say they take offense when I accuse them of not really believing any of it. They fail to recognize that it would be far, far worse to accuse them of actually believing it was true. To, oh, wait, you know what though? You know what the, they really do believe it. They're just too chicken shit to put it in practice. I've done the same thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not on a high horse with these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, that model may actually be better than being a. Uh, uh, a scruffy radical, because at least you can have the family and, and be fruitful and multiply when you're yeah. doing that, as opposed to running around like a, you know, like a buck wild fool without a family. You well, know? I, I, it may be less sinful. When they go all the way, I don't think so. When they go all the way to condemning Paul Hill, when he acts like their rhetoric is true, yeah. you know what though? You know what though? They're just chicken shit. And it's, you know, you you could you could say that the you know that they're. Uh, Oh, you know, just just saying that so that they can continue to function in society. Right. May I, I'm not, but it's still chicken spit. I mean, uh, people, you know, people are overwhelmed because it comes from so high up in in the human chain of command. It's basically New World Order and banksters. Yeah, but if, people, they, if they had rallied around Paul Hill and a significant minority <laughs> you know, defended him. We would have brought this thing to resolution long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened with 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 um, Paul Hill. Thought he was like uh, you know he shouldn't be comparing him to Raskolnikov. No. That's a, a more more like, like John Brown. You got it. And that's who Paul Hill compared himself to. Yeah, that's right. who he was. Uh, I think like, that's except that slavery abolition was nowhere near as evil. evil. Nowhere near as evil. But what you got a significant African blacks aren't that upset about slavery because they participated in it. You know. You got a significant minority of. Christian uh, abolitionists and other abolitionists who were not who were humanists, but they no. who stood publicly and in the newspapers stood by Paul Hill, uh, John Brown, John Brown, John Brown. No, and that's what's required to bring it to resolution. So they postponed the resolution by by through that chicken shit cowardice, and that's why there's no excuse for it. And it may, well, it may in fact be government controlled resistance. Yeah. Which then is a whole other kettle of fish. And that's why, you, okay. you know, Rob, you can't, you can't excuse them for it. I'm not excusing them. The Bible excusing. says that he who, I mean, us not doing what Paul Hill did is one thing, but he who condemns the just, yeah, who right. justifies the wicked, yeah, no, 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 they no. alike are the abomination unto the Lord. They are. That's what yeah. the Bible says. Okay, and so oh. that's that's the price they felt they had to pay to be part of yeah. this society. And what this shows from Frederick Clarkson, and he's not the only one, is that is that the people who don't know the Lord, like Fred Clark here, and other uh, others who don't know the Lord and who needed to hear the Lord, oh. just like we see that the Muslim world closed their ears to the Lord because so many professing Christians uh, were were unjustly yeah. on the side of the Zionists. Yep. Even when the Zionists can, you know, the Zionists can do no wrong. That's right. The Israelis can do no wrong. You know? Pull up their own so, skyscraper. So, right. Right. Pull up their own worship. Right. 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 <laughs> so. So. Many who Push abortion on their own country. You know? yeah, right. Many who might may have heard the uh, gospel otherwise from Christian missionaries closed their ears to it because it was patently clear that Christians don't believe their own gospel. We may be we may be part of the reason that Christians are being wiped out in a lot of the world. Yes. Oh, we are. We are. Our foreign policy and the, and the why the, are the we city? sending them arms if we're so concerned about them in yeah. Nigeria and no, no. the Middle East? Why aren't we? Why isn't Christendom? The flippin' Vatican has enough guns in their own basement to do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just goes on and on. But our, our decision, the decision, not our decision, but the decision of the pro-life movement to, to do what Fred Clarkson, to, to, to back away when a few individuals um, 
uh, a few individuals lived out their rhetoric. It may be worse than cowardice. It may be a, a government-controlled resistance, yeah. which would be very malevolent. Yeah. Very, extremely malevolent. And, uh, uh, you know, well, we took part in an alternative to all that, trying to help Neil Horsley get elected governor of Georgia. We sure did. It was us two and Neil. We sure did. Who, who yeah. Primarily it was. And it was, you know, running our credit cards up to pay for running the vehicle around. And we got a lot of local news media. We didn't get any national. But we got, I can talk, I'm up here in the middle of the country, doing, and Georgia's in the southeast. And five years later, I can talk to people from Georgia. And they remember that. They whole, remember it. The they whole remember campaign, it, yeah. you know. And, and uh, uh, it was... His, his campaign slogan, this is how cutting edge this was, nullification, interposition, and I'll end abortion in Georgia or die trying. Well, or die That's trying. exactly what Tom Heffling said in his presidential run yeah. a few years yeah. later. Yeah. I'll end abortion or die trying. Yeah, people have, uh, He's forgotten today because it cuts too close to the uh, bone. Well, people have uh, imitated uh, a lot of Neil Horsley's uh, things, and, and they don't credit him. But that's the Lord knows. The, the Lord, Lord knows. yeah, yeah. That's and and people did have the in Georgia did have the opportunity to vote for that's right. Neil Horsley. So we've been utterly marginalized. Uh, I'm getting a lot of support in Africa. Uh, yeah, now. a lot of a lot of significant support. Significant and and more global support. I have yeah. an invitation to go to. Uh, New Zealand that's apparently going to be paid for and speak in New Zealand. I hadn't told you about this. No. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And, um, and Bunch other... of Catholics? No, no, they're Protestants. Protestants. I guess they have a few of them down there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, mm. when is it? You but, but I'm getting more support from Catholics than ever. Oh, of in, course. in Africa. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, <clears throat> I, well, it hasn't been nailed down yet. Okay, we'll, okay. See. we'll see. Good. If New Zealand, okay, we'll if New Zealand does to me what, what Australia did to Troy Newman, but yeah. I don't think I'm. High profile enough yeah, for it, but no. we'll see. We'll see. Um, go in there in a so, boat. So let's go, go in back there in to a boat. They won't, they, you know, at the airport they'll they'll vet you. Maybe not if you land at somebody. Let, let's get back to brother yeah, Fred yeah, yeah, right. because brother Fred, brother Fred is is actually prescribing a new wave of terrorism. So we need to pay attention to That's it. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Because this is God is able to raise up rocks from the ground to speak His word. Okay. So, so brother Fred Clark is able to speak out of a donkey's mouth. Fred Clark might be. Even right. more likely than that. All right. Okay. To accuse them, that is the anti-abortion fundraiser, <laughs> of, to accuse them of really believing what they have written into this law would be the nastiest, most vicious accusation imaginable. Mm -hmm. And now, <laughs> listen to this. Check this out. He says, I'm always a bit reluctant to point this out because I know that this country is home to dozens of would-be Raskolnikovs and Paul Hills who will recognize the vast gulf between this worse than the Holocaust language and the actions. Don't look at me. I'm too chicken smith. Okay, and the actions it would demand of them if it were true. <laughs> Who is he talking about? Dozens of would-be Paul Hills. Yeah, I, I wish I know. We're not running across. Maybe they're it. under the yeah, newspaper I, I, I over know. here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, what's that guy's name? Fred Clark. No, no, the, the guy's always citing out of Dostoevsky. Oh, Ro Raskolnikov. Raskolnikov. Here, Raskolnikov. Here, Raskolnikov. I'm not seeing anybody respond. Okay. He says, And these troubled, entitled, prideful, and tormented men are likely to view that as a challenge. Well, as a dare. As a challenge. As a dare. Yeah. That's not strong And enough. they'll set out to prove their consistency and thereby their moral superiority and moral exceptionalism by setting fire to medical clinics or by opening fire on nurses and doctors, or by bombing hundreds of spectators at the Olympics. But the same... Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but the same challenge and dare has now been officially written into law by the state of Alabama. The law will be perceived not just as a dare, but as marching orders by all the warped little Raskolnikovs out there <laughs> who have just... Yes. <laughs> who have just been... <laughs> We assured that millions of their neighbors are worse than Hitler, worse than Stalin, worse than Mao and the Khmer Rouge and the genocidaires all combined. <laughs> they, they will be reaching for their axes and their guns and their pipe bombs and, <laughs> and setting out to prove that this is true. <clears throat> to prove that they are morally... Hold this for me, Rob. Okay. Thank you. That they are morally... Superior by wreaking the violence that they hope will reveal and confirm their moral exceptionism. This will not end well. Well, thank you, Brother Fred. <laughs> we really appreciate that. Um, I think I'll end on that note. Okay. Thanks a lot.